Welcome to episode 67 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. In the first part of today's video, I will talk about the Nunchaku Fluxmania model, which is fast and great for realistic images and upscale. Then, in the second part, I will show you two methods to make videos from images using the WAN 2.2 model with Loris and the WAN Rapid All-in-One model, which also supports first frame and last frame. That is how the video you see now was created, and at the end we have our winners for the October Art Challenge. Let's start with the Fluxmania model first. I talked about it in episode 41, but now we have a Nunchaku version, which makes it much faster. The workflows can be downloaded for free from Discord. Check the video description for direct links. Let's start with a text-to-image workflow first. If you don't have Nunchaku nodes working, you can use this comfy UI installer and just run the Nunchaku bat files from the add-ons folder. There are two models available for it, but you need the one that matches your card. So if you have a 40 series NVIDIA card or lower, get the INT4 version, and if you have a 50 series, get the FP4 version from here. I have the 40 series, so I will download this one. I navigate to my Comfy UI folder until I find the Models folder, and there we have the Diffusion Models folder where we save the model. Inside that Models folder, place all the models in their proper folders according to the instructions. The Clip model should be downloaded from here and placed in the Clip folder. Do the same for the T5 model and place it in the same folder. Download the VAE model and place it in the VAE folder. The last model is an Upscaler, which you place in the Upscale Models folder. Here are the nodes installed from the manager, but if you use the easy installer made by Ivo, you should already have all the nodes installed. After all models are downloaded and placed in the right folders, press the R key so Comfy UI refreshes and detects the models. In the first part of the workflow, we generate the image, and in the second part, we do an upscale to get better details. I changed some settings in the upscaler to make it faster and achieve better results. Select the model you downloaded in this node. If you have the 50 series, you should have FP4 here instead of INT4 like I have, and the rest should work by default if you didn't change any models. Fluxmania likes long, detailed prompts, so you can use ChatGPT, Gemini, or other LLMs to generate prompts for it. You can select the ratio you want your final image to be. Let's test first with a square image. When we run the workflow, you can see the actual size in this preview node I added. In the K sampler, the seed is fixed, so you need to change it manually because we use an upscaler, and we want to upscale the same image, not a random one. This is the result, a more realistic image compared to the flux dev model. Let's try a portrait ratio to see what we get. And this is the result, not bad for a fast generation. Let's also try a landscape version. Usually close-up portraits work best. It still has problems with hands like other models, but just try different seeds. As for speed, it takes around 10 seconds on my 40 series card, so it's pretty fast. Let's go back to the square ratio, and I will change the seed and run it again. If we look at the result, it's okay but still not as clear as I want, that's why I added the upscaler to improve it. It's easy to enable the upscaler group from here, and what it does next is use an upscale model to make the image bigger. In my case, I use the Nomos model, but you can also try the Cyax model. The image is upscaled two times using that model, and then it goes again into the K sampler. Very important here is the denoise value. If you want it to be very similar to your image or you get double faces in the background, use 0.1. If you want a bit more detail, try values like 0.2 or higher. For the tile diffusion part, this splits the image into tiles, so it can generate without crashing but it depends on your video card, you can increase or decrease your settings. With these settings, it works fine. I usually increase the batch value on mine since it can process more images at once. And we got our upscaled version that we can compare here by moving the mouse to the right to see the after version. Keep in mind that imperfections make the image more realistic, but sometimes it can add too many imperfections. In that case, you can reduce the denoise or just fix them with the remove tool in Photoshop. This is the image that gets saved. It will have up in the name from upscale. Usually the first time upscaling can be a little slower, but the second time is faster. Here's how I make it faster on my card. I change the batch to eight and then try again. Now I did the same upscale, but much faster. Not bad for an upscaler that doubles the size in less than 30 seconds. Let me disable the upscaler and show you how I create the long prompts. You can ask ChatGPT to give you long descriptive prompts, 
or you can copy this prompt or another one you like, then go to ChatGPT or Gemini and ask for a similar prompt for what you need. For example, I asked here for a woman in a black dress on the street, and it gave me a similar prompt that I can copy and test in Comfy UI. The result is this one. Pretty nice, but it could be sharper, so we can enable the upscaler again and run the workflow to get a more detailed and bigger version of it. Let's compare before and after. It looks pretty good, but if I look closely at the skin on her arms, it has a few too many imperfections. Maybe I can play with the denoise settings to adjust that. Let me change the denoise value to 0.1 and try again. For the face, it looks okay, more detailed compared to the original. Let's go down and check the arm to see how the skin looks. I think I prefer this version. You can go even lower in denoise if you want, but I usually use values between those ranges. I also made a compact version using subgraphs, but I suggest you try the previous version first to make sure it works, since subgraphs can still have some bugs. Make sure it works before testing the compact one. In this case, it worked fine. Let's enable the upscaler and get a bigger image. Here is one of the bugs, it seems. Yesterday it worked fine, but now it shows 0 instead of 0 0.25 like I had yesterday. It still works, but it looks like a display glitch. You can use this button to go inside the subgraph, and there you can change more settings for the upscaler part, K-samplers, tiled diffusion, or the model used for upscaling. Let's go back. Let's check the first subgraph too. Here we have the settings for all the models, so you can make any changes and then come back. It's now easier to get a clean looking workflow. Check episode 66 for more tips on subgraphs. Let's move to the next workflow, this time an image to image workflow. We have an image that we want to make a variation of, something different. If you want to keep the same face, you need a model like Quen Edit to do the editing. For now, we just need something similar but different. To test it, I added a portrait of a woman with red hair and a black hat. I used a high denoise value so it has the freedom to make it more different and maybe also add that hat. And this is the result. You can see it's a different image but still has the same mood. If I reduce the denoise value, the AI becomes less creative, so it will make more subtle changes. This is useful when you have small issues, like bad hands or details you want to fix with a slightly different version. You can see this time there's no hat and red hair, so it made a subtle change only. You can enable the upscaler to get a bigger version. Maybe you just want to keep the same image and make it bigger or more detailed, like if you made an image with Quen or Flux and want a more realistic look. Then you can use the upscaler. I use it all the time, even when I need smaller images, because it adds more realism and detail. All you have to do is upload an image here. The image is scaled down to a smaller size so the AI can handle it better. Then, use a prompt for that image and run it. Let's see what we got. It added more texture and detail to the image and made it bigger. If it's too much, remember to reduce the denoise value. Let me copy the image really quick and open a Quen Edit workflow to show you how I usually use it. I use this image as input, and let's say I want to add a hat and replace the t-shirt to make it more fitting for Halloween. When I run it, because I used Quen Edit, I get a similar character but with the changes I asked for. Check episode 64 to learn more about Quen Edit. I can unpack this to see that it's just a normal Quen Edit Plus workflow like I showed in that episode 64. Now, the problem with Quen generation is that it looks a bit too smooth for my taste, which makes it less realistic. So let me copy this image and go to the upscaler I showed you earlier, paste that image and adjust the prompt, then I'll run the workflow. Look now how it added more realism and texture to the image. The clothes were smooth before, and now you can see the texture. You can reduce the denoise if it adds too much texture. And let me show you one more workflow before we move to the video models. I use this workflow to generate portrait or landscape images to use as input for video models to create video for YouTube and other social media that use 16 to 9 or 9 to 16 ratios. By default, it's in portrait mode. You can see here it says enable portrait and it says yes. So if I run it like this, I should get a portrait image for that prompt. If I disable the portrait option, I should get a landscape ratio image. Everything works great. I can enable the upscaler if I want, and I should get a 2K version because I used that size for the first image generation, and it's upscaled to double the size, so we get a perfect 2K result. 
We can check the upscale, but let's close all the workflows first. You can hold shift to close them without being asked if you want to save the workflow. Now let's open this WAN 2.2 image to video workflow. While I was recording the video, the community let me know that there's also an option with LoRa Incorporated. So make sure you check Discord for workflows to get both versions, one with LoRa separate and one with LoRa included in the main models. Let's check what you need to run this workflow. You need two models, one high and one low. So download both and put them in the diffusion models folder. Depending on your video card, you can try different sizes, bigger or smaller, which you can find listed there. You can see those are the high models and these are the low models. Get a Q version that fits your card. You can try Q8 if you have a lot of VRAM and if it's too slow or gets locked, you can test Q6, Q5 or Q4 until one of them works. Then you need a clip model which you can place either in the text encoders folder or the clip folder. It worked in both last time I checked. You also need a WAN 2.1 VAE, even if you're using the WAN 2.2 model. These are the LoRa files we use to speed up generation. In the other workflow, they're already included in the model, so test that one as well. Then install the nodes from the manager, which you should already have if you used my previous WAN workflows. Press R to refresh and see the new downloaded models, and make sure you select your correct version in the model node. Do the same for the LoRa model and make sure you don't mix high with low. I have this portrait of a woman that I want to animate. Then, I need a prompt where I describe what I want to see, how the subject and the camera should move. Then you set the size. If you don't have a very strong video card, try this size or smaller. You can see examples here of sizes you can use. Let's run the workflow. While it's running, you can see the settings I used, but you can experiment with other settings if you want. Because I used a four-step LoRa, I can generate in only four steps. It has two steps in the first case sampler and another two steps in the second case sampler. For duration, you can do between one and five seconds. You can use the number of frames to decide the length. For example, here where I put 81 frames, that means 5 seconds, because 5 times the number of frames, which is 16, gives a result of 80, and we add an extra frame to get the 81 value. I got something that looked like a static video, but in fact I paused the video by mistake. You can right click on it and click resume if that happens and it doesn't play automatically like it should. And this is the result. It came out okay for that small size, but if you have 24 GB of VRAM like I have, you should be able to do higher resolutions. Most of the time I use this size. If we check the first video, it finished in about 100 seconds, and sometimes it's even faster on the second run. But with this bigger size, it can take over 3 to 4 minutes depending on what you do. I was also recording while generating and it got stuck in VAE decode, which would have taken a lot of time so I had to restart Comfy UI. And these are the results, as you can see, the video quality is much better. Here is another test. The other workflow with LoRa included gives similar results but might work better in some cases. It has some different settings recommended by ASD from Discord. Now let's test an all-in-one model. As the name says, it has all the models incorporated into one. No extra clip, LoRa, or VAE is needed because everything is included in a single checkpoint. That is why it uses the Load Checkpoints node instead of the Load Diffusion model node. The requirements are minimal, you just need one model and those two nodes. The clip and VAE are now connected here like we used to have in SDXL workflows. You can download the model from here and place it in the checkpoints folder, or you can find more versions in the same location. When I recorded this, it was version 7, but you can try any of those versions. Let's check the files and folders. Okay, so last night while I was sleeping, a new version appeared. Now it says version 8. I will add that in the workflow instead of v7 after I finish editing this video, so you can always check which one is the latest version and try that. If you click on the model card and scroll down, you should see what the latest version is and what it changes. Right now it is version 8, but check again in a week or two in case there are newer versions you can try. Make sure you load the version you downloaded here. We have the option to use a first frame if we want, or we can also use an end frame as you will see later. From here you select the length or number of frames. As I mentioned, 81 means 5 seconds. Then again, choose a size depending on your video card and how much VRAM you have. 
add a prompt. It uses only one K sampler, which makes everything really simple. If you want an end frame, you can right click and choose bypass. Let's select this woman with the hat. I adjusted the prompt so the woman is adding the hat to her head, and this is the result, with the video ending on that exact frame. You can now continue the video by adding that end frame as the first frame, and then add a new end frame to create a video like the one you saw at the beginning of the video. You can also do text to video using this workflow. If you are wondering what is different, the only change is that it does not have these three nodes. Everything else is the same, except that for this strength value, instead of one, it should be zero. The result is something like this. So if you want to see a project from start to finish, here is how I do it. I use this workflow to get an image. I use ChatGPT to generate a long prompt for what I have in mind, like a woman holding a black cat. Then I use that prompt here. The result looks fine. I can work with that. Maybe we can make it a little sharper. Let's enable the upscaler and run the workflow. Now we have a bigger image with more details, so it looks more realistic. I go to the upscaled version and copy that image. Then you can open the WAN workflow, any of the ones I showed before, and paste the image there. We also need a video prompt. So let's paste the image into ChatGPT and ask for a prompt. I have some custom GPTs made for that, but you can get good results just by asking for a video prompt. It split the prompt into pieces, so let's ask it to combine everything into a single prompt. And this is the prompt I got. Let's see if it works well. I paste the prompt, adjust the size to match the ratio of the image, and to go faster, I will leave it on the default portrait mode. And this is the result. It came out quite good for such a small video size. It can be a little bit too slow motion sometimes, but it is a free model, so we work with what we have. And the third edition of the monthly challenge just ended. For this month, the theme was, My Pet Has the Best Halloween Costume. This edition had a bigger prize for the first place, thanks to the Running Hub platform, which offered a three-month premium account. It's a good alternative for those who want to run comfy UI in the cloud. We had a lot of entries, and it was hard to choose, so me and the moderator selected 10 entries that stood out and put them to a public vote. We had three winners, first place Onrianti, second place Duffy the Duck, and third place Souls. You will see a few more entries in a minute. Before I show you the Art Challenge finalists, let me first thank you, Legends, and everyone who subscribed to the membership. Please leave a like and a comment to help with the YouTube algorithm so I can make more tutorials for you. And now, I'll leave you with some examples of entries from the October Art Challenge. October AR Challenge ignites The moon awakens digital lights Head walks proud through mist and gloom. Picks aroma, dreams arise. Glowing worlds beneath our eyes. Whisper, spin through crystal air. Magic glows, creation flares. My pet has the best Halloween outfit. Every spirit stops to admire. Every ghoul and ghost will admit